Hello everyone, welcome back to the Triforce podcast. Oh, mmm, so good to be here. In fact, recording a little bit late because Pflex has been away this week and Sips has been to the dentist. <laughs> no, I well, it wasn't me who went. It was oh. not, it was, yeah, no, I went to the dentist a couple weeks ago, full transparency. I see, but no you problems. actually have to keep going back to the dentist because no, you have multiple I, my, children. No, my, my wife needed a filling. I don't understand right. how. My wife actually flosses. Right. I don't really. Um, she is she, her, her dental hygiene is like second to none. Mine is lacking. You know, does, like she, I, does she secretly eat a lot of chocolate when you're out working? <laughs> she might. I mean, I don't know. Uh, but, um, but so she had to get a filling. And, uh, and my son needs a uh, retainer as well. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. So just um, went through, just going through this process ourselves as well with the, yeah, the thirteen-year-old yeah. at the moment had to have two teeth out. Oh. Um. Ooh, so that yeah, to rough. make room for the braces, but uh, yeah. annoyingly, we now need to wait months to actually get the braces fitted. They. Yeah. I think I spoke about this, didn't I, on a previous episode where we went there and they said, history? "Yeah, they said no. we haven't taken the teeth." Like they, we went with, went there for the scan. Where they lay, like put this three D map of her teeth. They're like, yes, we yeah. can do this. And they said, we'll just you know we just get need a couple of teeth taken out. And we'll put the braces in. We'll set an appointment. I was like, cool. Bish bash bosh. So we yeah. made the appointment. Turned up, and they were like, she's still got the teeth. And I said, yeah, I know. I was kind of hoping you guys would do that. And they said, no. And I said, okay, that was not <laughs> imparted to me in any way that we would have to get the teeth removed somewhere else and then come back. I thought this was right. a dentist. And they were like, no, we don't do extractions. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry, I was going to ask Steve next door to do it. <laughs> right. That's right, because he's yeah. got a door handle and some string. I right? No, like... no, what are you talking about, door handle and string? Just get uh, Edward Norton from American History X to do a curb stomp on you <laughs> oh and knock, God. knock out all your goddamn teeth. No problem. <laughs> I was wow. just a little... I was not expecting uh, to be told... Oh, yeah, to sorry. be told that uh, you're in oh, the wrong what? place for, ha- for having the, anything done. Why have teeth? you come here with a mouth full of teeth? <laughs> right. This is a dentist. It was weird. <laughs> so, yeah, so the, we, we so basically bizarre. have to go and get the teeth taken out. And then the nearest appointment is like fucking June or something annoying like that or August. So what you want is a tooth removal dentist. This one <laughs> right. is a tooth addition dentist. It was so, just so fucking God, awkward. Jesus, what? Oh, man. That's so bizarre. All right. Well, so listen. Um, <laughs> sorry. I... Um, um, so I didn't have to go to the dentist, like I said. So my wife took my son to the dentist. Well, by the sounds of it, you will have be some stuff having to. Done. You know, crikey. Well, it's not flossing, dude. No, well, Same. I mean, it's so far so You're good. You're getting like, old. Well, you can't, yeah, I know, but like, might, I just... You get one set of chompers. Know, you need but, to... You know what? Don't want to I be feel like, like even if grandma I lose them with all. the false teeth in the jar next to your bed. Go I on, you, carry on. Your gums adapt. <laughs> your gums adapt, they harden. You know, it's fine. Whatever, man. Like I, I just like, you know what I mean? Like, I, like I, I got them now. I love a, them. A Don't get me wrong. Gummy old man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, I brush my teeth. <laughs> I'm downplaying. <laughs> it. I do, I do actually <laughs> brush my teeth very, very regularly. So I want to get no... that, the whistle that old people get when they. Like that when they talk. <laughs> Dungeon seems to be. Yeah, so I had to stay home. in five years' time. <laughs> yeah. I had to stay home uh, with the Goyles, with my uh, with my six year old daughter and my right. nine month old daughter. Oh, yo, yo. So the, my, the nine month old slept for like an hour, which Sweet. was great. Um, so I just watched like YouTube and farted around on my iPad while that was happening. My My daughter was just watching My Little Pony. But then when the baby woke up, uh, unbeknownst to me, my six-year-old daughter had this master plan that it, it, was, it was time for a tea party. So I'm like, okay, fine. Like she had the blanket out and she had all the cups and all the, all the fake food and everything. <laughs> the baby woke up She'd and planned she, was this like, whole event. she was like getting excited because there was all this crap on the ground and stuff. So I was like, whatever, fine. I'll take part. You know, like I'll, I'll do the tea party. Holy crap. I like there's so many rules. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Like I was actually getting angsty throughout the whole thing. Like I, I was I was trying to like defy well, you know the rules, you know, like It's like um, meeting the Queen, you know, there's protocol yeah. to be followed. But the, yeah. and, and, and I the noticed rules of about... etiquette for a child's tea party is apparently it's very strict and seemingly yeah. a lot of it is completely arbitrary. 
You couldn't well, it, guess it. It was like being at the Queen's Tea Party, but with like, uh, it, I felt like I was uh, like in a Roald Dahl book or something like that, where I wasn't meant to be at the tea party, right. but the the uh, the protagonist of the book was guiding me through the tea party. So like my, okay. my daughter had two personas for this, okay? She had the very chirpy, upbeat, like hostess um role that okay. she was playing yeah. and then anytime i messed up the guy in the van with the earpiece yeah anytime i messed up she would go like very quiet she'd be like no you cannot do that it does not work that way and like it was like really serious all of a sudden wow like i put i put chocolate in my cup i was like you know i'm just gonna drink my chocolate out of the cup <laughs> and like the baby was just i don't know what the baby was doing and my daughter was getting like all these rules it was crazy like i wanted right. to i wanted to to have some pancakes you're so she was like okay i'll make you some pancakes the ambassador was it like you're having gonna... tea with the queen where the queen is in a really bad mood yeah pretty much so she's like what do you want on your pancakes and i you know you're just like i'm i'm there but i'm 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 not right i'm just trying right. to kind of hurry it along a little bit and so the first thing i saw was like what looked like a pile of mushy peas but it's like a plastic one uh you know like fake fake mushy peas so i was like i'll have some peas on there she's like the quiet voice came out again no you can't do that you can't have peas on pancakes you have to have chocolate or maple syrup and i was like uh yeah hit me with some maple syrup then i guess uh sorry like i just i, I, I just was apologizing the whole time i i couldn't do anything right and but meanwhile this the baby gets a free are, pass though. the baby was drinking from the cup upside down and like uh you know licking all the spoons and everything like but for like some savage. reason, I was just having a really, a really tough time. So that was my morning. And uh, well, you know, you know, you sorry. should have read the the book of you know Mrs. Doolally's book of etiquette for girls. You know, you should have you should have properly for young you know, girls. You didn't have the, you didn't have the, the benefit of the no. embroidery lessons. I didn't know what I was getting that, into. That's the problem that a young royal um, expectant woman would would do. Yeah. It's a shame. Sips. So it was very you, you serious business, down. it turns out. So that happened like half an hour ago, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm fresh um, out of it's that. It's very yeah. fresh. Very fresh. <laughs> yeah. A raw <laughs> wound being poked yeah. at here on the podcast. Yeah. I'm very sorry to hear it. So but, I'm out in the garage but, now where it's nice and peace and quiet, and I play by my own rules out here, which is pretty good. Um, you can I have noticed, your own um, tea parties with your own yeah things you can have peas on your pancakes all you want terry's yeah, getting bigger don't... now though and he's mm -hmm. he's starting to stink a little bit so i ordered a um diffuser i don't know if you have one of these it's like it looks what like a that? humidifier but it's just like a small it's like a small circular urn type thing you plug it in and i think it just kind of uh sprays mist out of it like it like like steam you know like i think it heats up the water a bit lets it steam out and like occasionally sprays little like mists into the room but you can put some like um essential oils in there you know like some lavender or well, you whatever you might have to be careful put like one you or, might not be able to breathe that stuff in one or two drops in there and just like you know make the room smell nice and and yeah but you don't want to poison him no i, I don't, I don't, I don't really like, believe be careful. in essential oils I don't. Um, I don't intend to poison them. I, I know that want... if you have certain pets, like if you have pet birds, you can't have any candles or anything like oil at all because it goes in the air and their lungs are really, really sensitive to it. Oh, really? Oh, um, maybe I yeah, shouldn't so do it then. You have to be. Super I was just careful. gonna. I was gonna like super dilute it though. You know, I was just gonna put like one little drop. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted the You're such a good dad. I just wanted such... the, the 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 nice smell, you know. I'm gonna have to send you some care packages for because yeah. I sent Terry some care packages before, and he, he needs um. It's about because I was, I was reading about turtles. And apparently, they need the biggest like square space. Yes, I know he's thing. outgrowing his space now. Well, he's been in the yeah. in the the weather's been well, nice. So he's been out in the lot, garden a yeah. lot. Yeah, I think that's fine to have like um. But yeah, I an need uh, some solution because it just smells nice. like ass in here sometimes. Like they come in and just, what are you doing, Terry? It stinks. The yeah. Whole, the whole place well, he's reeks. pooping in there is what he's doing. Well, I doing. guess so, yeah. man. I mean, he probably pooping. thinks the same thing about you, so I'm sure he'd quite appreciate the diffuser. But yeah, I think you should True, definitely yeah. look up whether it's going to poison him or not. I hate the, to be that voice of madness in no, this No, no, it's a good shout. Where... It's a good shout. I, I, thought that, like, I thought that just like a little tiny bit would be okay, but maybe I should look it up it's, it's stupid because certain things we use are like we just don't realize i don't know how all these animals survive in the wild when basically everything like you know when when it feels like you know because people are like oh my dog 
you know, almost choked to death on a bit of plastic. I'm like, how do the how do the feral dogs survive then, like out there in the street all the time, like because there's plastic just everywhere. Just... It's like you see all these birds like eating like fucking shit out of t- nappies and stuff, and mm-hmm. I'm like, how the fuck are they doing that? And yet. Like I don't think the, they're you know, living long lives, though. I mean, you're only seeing a snapshot of their life. <laughs> that's probably true. They're probably dead, yeah. like within ten minutes of that um, of that, of that situation. Sighting. Yeah, and a cat's eating them, and then yeah. that's fine. Because we assume that they go off fine. and live and have lots of babies and live a happy bird life. You know, just swooping and fishing and eating mm. more diapers and stuff like that. But the reality is. They're probably dead. And you know those ones that you see like smushed on the road or sometimes just dead on the side of the sidewalk in town or whatever? It's probably like 10 minutes before they were probably eating a diaper. I, although I will say, <laughs> I have, I, when we moved to Queen Square about, you know, six years ago now, there was, I noticed there was a seagull. I'm going to get the door while you guys do this. There was a seagull <laughs> with one leg outside. That seagull's still going. So, really? you know. Yeah, I saw him. I saw him the other day. So yeah, I, it's nice. To, you know, I, they say that like, obviously, animals live a lot, lot, lot less long in the wild than they do in captivity. But you know, and seagulls live about fifty years apparently, even in the wild. So, a long time. But yeah, um, he's still going. So I know, it gives me hope a little bit that Leggy has somehow Le- managed. To, <laughs> Leggy, like, man, somehow managed to battle his way you know and, and still has his own little bit of turf in queen square that he guards from all the other seagulls yeah you know just just thinking it's nice so like he's That's just all. he's got it all locked down and like the the minute the minute like some sort of diaper or something enters his sphere of influence he's squawking he's keeping the other ones away he's marking he's his like, territory he's holding down his turf with his one leg i imagine yeah. him to have an eye patch as well maybe that's incorrect but like it just seems like what you've described is like kind of like a Vietnam War veteran seagull to me. You know, yeah, on the streets. Gosh. I heard a thing this week about eye patches. A lot of pirates wore them just because they would uh, go below decks, and it was a lot darker below decks. So they'd be out in the bright sunshine oh, in the Caribbean, please. and then they'd switch the eye patch how, to the other eye. How, how, they, how did they figure they this could out? See below deck. <laughs> that's bollocks. What? That's you think that's bollocks? bollocks? Yeah. Oh man, I like that idea. I, I, just, I mean, um, I like seems the like idea, but I mean, there's because... no way that somebody even, that that's such a such a uh, like a, a boring detail. I don't think anybody would have even written that in a book or memoirs, like the memoirs of of uh, Ripper Joe, the Patchy Joe, the most notorious Yarr, pirate on the I I seven my seas for twenty years on the open sea. It made it easier to see indoors after coming up from the deck. Well, that that would be true of anyone. Who pirate was outdoors life hacks. and then had to go indoors? A pirate, pirate life hack. <laughs> All right, Farmers you're right. have been doing this now. In fact, everybody should wear a patch. What goes the Royal outside? Navy eye patch. That's true. Oh, it's li- that's right. ludicrous. No, that actually, t- that is probably where bollocks, did then, they okay. come up with this? Shit? You know what? Like, fucking. Here's the thing. I const- I, I'm being constantly told bollocks though by people at the pub and stuff. Like, <laughs> So I heard a story off one of my friends at the pub the other the other day. Um, I won't say who. But basically, he knows someone who one of his friends is is like a vet. Okay? It's Duncan, and his and this vet used to work in Brazil. When you say oh. vet, do you mean he's a veteran or he's a veterinarian? A veterinarian. A veterinarian. Sorry, a Brazilian Going from, veterinarian. Yeah. Interesting. A Brazilian vet. Uh, well, no, he used to he work, works in a Brazilian zoo for for a year, I think, and he heard a lot of stories when he was there. Right. And one of them that happened when he was there was the flamingos, right, had been dying, and so apparently, unrelated story, he mentioned that they they had to they were annoyed because they had to keep smuggling in new flamingos to replace the ones that Why died. Why did they have to smuggle like, them in? Well, the, again, I, I, I was like, he was like, that's a story for another time, and I was like, okay, yeah, fine. it sounds like bollocks. <laughs> yeah, Go this on. is like, <laughs> right. So there was, um, okay. Now I don't know this. Uh, right, sure. So the flamingos <laughs> are dying. Okay, like one, one a day is found dead, and um, in, in, in the, um, in, in the flamingo area. Yeah. Okay? And so they take it to the um, to the vets, and the vets. This is the guy who t- the vet who told him the story, I guess. Yeah. They 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 said that yeah, its neck's been broken. It needs an eye patch. And, Go on. And they might want to install some security cameras. Oh gosh. Okay? okay. And so they're like, okay, fine. So they installed some security cameras, 
And that same night, they saw a guy scaling the fence, the flamingo enclosure, climbing in, yeah, chasing a flamingo, right, right, from the group, grabbing it, uh, breaking its neck, and then fucking it. Okay, okay. And it turns out that the vet had found like. It turns out the flamingo pussy is the best pussy you can Jesus get. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Well, okay, so, so apparently it turned out that, yeah... And it's even better been, when it's dead. I mean, this, this guy come on. Been, what the fuck? Well, no, but this is it, apparently. So apparently there's a thing... This is what the this is what I was told, and it could, again, be complete bollocks, um, is that there is a history of people, some people in Brazil, fucking chickens, okay? Okay. Because apparently if you break the, if you break the neck of a chicken, it's cloaca or whatever... Uh, like spasms goes into like spasm and it's like a it's like a i don't fucking know all right i'm not i'm not thinking about what are I'm those, not, i don't think what are those nice. fake vaginas but called apparently it feels nice right to fuck it um worth for, killing or, a, an animal for like get, and i guess just like a flamingo go and have a wank or, or get it's a like a fancier chicken right <laughs> the exotic element <laughs> Adds to the lure of fucking a bird. <laughs> Chicken fucker. So, Excuse me, I only fuck flamingos and other <laughs> unusual birds. How dare you? I'm not some common chicken fucker. I fuck ostriches and emus. <laughs> and those, those ones in Australia that have big claws. What are they called? So, velociraptors. No, <laughs> raptors and other dinosaurs. <laughs> what if Jurassic Park was a Jurassic pork? Uh, welcome to Jurassic Park, and the music plays, and there's Richard Attenborough fucking a dinosaur. No, it's it gotta feels be so good. It's gotta be the original score, but like twanged up a bit, right? Yeah, yeah, like a slap bass, like some yeah, with some bass slapping and stuff. And there's the the T Rex giving a little coquettish look towards uh, Sam Neill, and he's like. Maybe I could fuck a dinosaur. He'll be. <laughs> Thanks for bringing me to Jurassic Park, uh, but I don't have any money to pay you. Um, <laughs> will this do? <laughs> Clever the girl. Very expensive on this island. <laughs> clever girl, he says. While he looks down at a raptor sucking him off. Oh, clever oh girl. My... Oh, this is getting oh into my... some fucking fanfic <laughs> territory right now. This is, this is some. Oh, Someone man. out there is furious. Beaten off thinking we, about we open the dinosaur. gates. Yeah, <laughs> man. Oh, man. Yes. Yeah, so I just I I don't know. I enjoyed that. He had a bunch of other stories about how like um I don't know stuff like kind of stuff you'd hear on Tiger King about like a horse a horse sanctuary. You know, not knowing what to do with the dead horses and getting a deal with the zoo to give them straight to the lions and stuff like yeah. this. So, oh, ring them up. Oh, I've got a dead horse. Oh, don't worry, we, the lions are hungry today. I'll come over and pick it up. You know? how, how often do you think people take a slightly unusual job just for the stories that they could tell down the pub? Because I think it's a lot more than you'd think. They love to be able to say, you never guess what happened at fucking zoo, mate. We caught some bloke, right? Here, here let me set the scene. There's some bloke, right? He's fucking the, the flamingos. Now, here's how we found out. You'd be like, what? He's like, yeah, mate, no, no, let me, let me tell you. It's a fucking brilliant story. That's the only reason this guy's got that job, is to be able to tell mm. the flamingo fucking story. I just got back from Sweden, if we want to talk about that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. By yeah. all means. I was there for a, a week. Uh, I had my own little apartment for the wow. week that I was there. Did you do any right. um did you do any did you do any uh sampling of local cuisine and uh try your hand at preparing any local cuisine in your apartment? I didn't do any cooking, but right. I did go out for dinner a couple of times. Okay. Um for some local cuisine indeed, uh Ooh. at a nice nice brewery nearby and uh Went out for dinner another time as well to an esports nice. bar. So James Harding, who I haven't seen in a long time. Um, and yeah, it was it was it was great. It was really good. It was a good week. It gave me a. It was it, like having my own place with a little kitchen, bathroom. You know, my bed. I got my desk. They provided us with computers. I could. I was streaming while I was there on my my downtime, which was a lot because I often didn't. My drive into work wasn't until seven thirty in the evening. Oh wow! And then we'd we'd start at like nine and finish at like three, so I'm sitting around for like twelve hours or whatever. It's like, well, I may as well do some streaming. So, yeah, so that crap. was cool. Um, I went out to the supermarket and got my little supplies and everything. I felt I was like a bachelor lifestyle for one week, um, which was crazy. 
and it sort of it gave me a taste of what it'd be like if I'd made some really bad decisions in my life and had wound right. up living on my own in a tiny studio apartment, no kids, no Mrs. F, just just playing video games all day. Uh, and I thought whilst I would definitely be able to get more done in terms of streaming and stuff like that, and would probably make content out of sheer boredom, um, it would also be a much sadder life. And when I came home last night and sat with the kids and we were chatting and you know the dog and everything was really pleased to see me it, it just felt nice and it made me appreciate how lucky i am um so it was a it was a good trip the dota was uh some of it was fairly questionable in in um in value but it was a lot of fun and i got yeah. to do hosting i did hosting for the first time i never done hosting before wow so so that's where they you, you're on the main desk in the middle is it no no I, so i'm on if you're looking at the screen i'm on the left Right. And I'm the one that says, you know, welcome back from the break. And I introduce what's coming up. I talk to so the Who were your co-hosts for this? So I had, you know, Perch? Yeah. And oh, you yeah. know, Cap? Yeah. yeah. So they wow. were on the desk. Oh, um, nice. So I was chatting to them. And then I had Jenkins and nice. Sunsfang, oh, who wow. are absolute Whoa. chaos. Like, just, they're, they're, they're bonkers. I'm very, yeah. very funny. So that was my other uh, desk. That's a big five. It yeah. was well, wow. yeah. So it was like those two, and then we'd swap for the other two. So they'd swap this. I only did the NA region. So you, those two were the casting pairs as well. So they'd swap back and forth between casting or paneling, and I was just hosting. And um, it's interesting, you know, you got the producer in your ear. You can go to break when you're ready, or can you queue up the interview stuff like that. So you just got to kind of monitor the conversation and try and steer it. Uh, and you know, you, you, you get used to it. I mean, the producers were really really good and it's a very simple show i mean there's really not much throwing to do it's very straightforward you know we come back from the break i say hello sometimes we go straight to a video then we come back then we go to a break it's like but it was good it was good good experience and something i oddly enough after 10 years of this shit i'd never done any hosting before i'd always been like a panelist or a yeah. caster or a content yeah, yeah. creator so it was uh, it was good fun and I, i'm going back next month less than a month actually i'm probably going in like three weeks um for the major so there'll be very similar thing for the group stages, I think, and then I'm gonna have to get a fucking suit and do main stage stuff, and uh, it should be should be fun. But it was, nice. it was yeah, good. get yourself get yourself down to Harley Street or whatever. Get yourself tailored. What's it called? Um, what am I thinking? Savile Row, nice... I think, is what you're Savile thinking. Savile Row. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. Um, well, that, that's some, the plan. You, some cosmetic surgery, you mean? <laughs> that, that's Harley Street. <laughs> that's Harley Street. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, get yourself some new chompers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man, get yourself a, a brand new spanking new pair of chompers. You're gonna be and if some, you're gonna get a wig. You're gonna get be hosting fitting. and stuff. Like, hey guys, <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the big Dota tournament. So you can't even welcome talk because your teeth are all teeth are enormous. Shit. Welcome yeah, back yeah. to the Dota tournament. I'm yeah, yeah. My just let me move my brand new hair out of the way. Welcome <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah, just. Yeah, just do a full circuit of London. Get everything. Get lipo. Get all... You know. Get get your get your. I don't know. Like Mr. Burns when he has his uh, regenerative yeah. uh, therapy he has to go through, where they inject him with stuff and put drops in his eyes and crack his spine and everything. Just go through some process. Come out the other side looking exactly the same. Beautiful. For the Stockholm pouring. Major. When when is it actually? Uh, let me get know, my calendar. I Hold know on. Paradox Paradox Con is happening. PDX um, Con. So it's yeah, next month. Sometime. Uh I'm oh, going to okay. be in it's Stockholm from the 10th wow, till the 23rd. That's really soon. So I'm away for like two weeks. Um, mm. And I think the major is the final three days. Uh, so it's not like like the rest of it will be the group stages and stuff, which is a lot more laid back and and uh, probably in the same studio and stuff like that. But then the actual main event will be in uh, a hockey arena oh. um, in the center of, of town near the Globen. Oh, Anyone very in cool. Stockholm know the Globen? I think it's going to be there. Their tickets are still available. Globen. The Globen. Mm. Uh, but Glub. Sweden's great. I love Sweden. Uh, it, it, it honestly feels like it would be a wonderful place to live. The winters would be the worst and probably only downside. Um, but, I mean, it, you know, there's loads of really nice stuff to wear. Sweden, the fashion for cold weather is very... Very good, you know. You everybody looks great in their cold weather gear, um, and uh, you know the Swedish people are just a very handsome people. They're just, just I don't know how they've done it, but probably stealing all our good-looking people back in the day. But they're uh, they're beautiful people, bringing them home. And it's just a yeah. beautiful, beautiful well, country. Well. You know, they only work eight hours a day. Like you start at eight, you finish at four. That is it. You cannot work someone more than that, and your next shift can't be less than eleven hours away. Uh, if you're freelance or in certain jobs, you're obviously your, your hours are different. But their rush hour is at 4 p.m. on the dot. Everybody right. is on the road, which was I was not expecting. Well, you didn't drive though, did you? 
Well, yeah, we had to drive. We we got driven from Um, the hotel to the studio. Did you do any driving yourself? I didn't do any driving, no. Pussy. Good idea. (laughs) Too scared? (laughs) 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 Pussy. No, I was was driven. Oh, nice. Uh, Good. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save money when shopping on your iPhone or computer. I installed Honey back a few months ago when we first heard about it, and it has been popping up, saving me money unexpectedly. I was buying some stuff, uh, some Warhammer spray paints yesterday, and I got 10 quid off, and I was like, holy shit. So, yeah, I recommend Honey, manually searching for coupon codes. You don't even have to remember to look for it. You don't have to search for your coupon book anymore. <laughs> that's the that's of right. Your it's right there. Just digitally. Pops up right there, digitally. It's on your phone. A digital coupon book. But I, my scissors have grown <laughs> rusty. <laughs> my daughter it's bought me use. a new phone and I got my coupon book I need book not. On, I on need my phone. Not. Clip That's right. <laughs> so if you, you don't, if you don't have them. Honey installed, <laughs> uh, you could just be straight up missing out of, of free, free, free savings. Well put, uh, young man. Very free eloquent. Free shit. You, you might, you go. might miss out on some free shit. That's you right. You wouldn't have had otherwise. Join Honey.com/slash/triforce. Uh, join honey.com slash trifle so you can just get it through the old various app stores on Safari and everything. Very specific. Good advice. <laughs> You're it, welcome. Is there a coupon for my, some, my time back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, you get the rest of the podcast absolutely free. Oh, value uh, for money. There you go. All right. Thank you. On with the show. Thank you. I have a really full mailbag this week if we want to dip into that. Or yeah, it's yeah. Holy well, crap. Well, shit. Yeah, Hit I mean me. that way I don't have to bring up any of the stuff I thought about. Well, this, no, week. this won't take too long. So I got an email from Colin, who says greetings uh, to Pyrian and uh, the Triforce podcast, and right. he singled me out after listening to several of the most recent episodes. I couldn't resist reaching out. He was he was overcome. I guess my name is indeed Colin. <laughs> he is a Colin. Uh, and he's a professional filer. Wait, were we? we, we... <laughs> okay, were we? Uh, so I, I'm guessing uh, he's mentioned Colin because we thought that Colin was a dead name. We said nobody's called Colin. Yes, exactly yeah. right. We okay. said nobody's called Colin. He's called Colin, and no one does filing. And he Turns does filing. <laughs> he does both of those things. <laughs> All right. So he works. Okay, Colin, Missouri. who does filing, right. uh, you got us there. <laughs> find me, uh, uh, find me an Abraham who does uh, stripping at a uh, female strip club. Huh? Okay, that's yeah. your homework this, this week. Uh, <laughs> so he he works at the Missouri Botanical Garden as an herbarium assistant. Right. Uh, so it's a oh. bunch of archived plants and dried pressed plants mounted onto paper, put them in folders and cabinets and stuff like that. Uh, so they're physical objects and they'll be thrown away. They have to be filed. And that's what he does. Um, he, uh, he he does that in, in Missouri. He says he sent me about eight pictures of his work. And if you can imagine, you know, flower pressing, when people do flower pressing, it's book after book after book yeah. filled with pressed leaves and plants and flowers and all oh, marked yeah. up. Some of these samples are very old uh, and they keep them all. And it looks like a really cool job. And it's got those filing cabinets with... They're, they're all in a big row and a huge handle on one end and you wind the thing and that thing comes out. So you don't need to have... It, it's it's a space saver because you just bring the filing shelves out to you rather than having to have uh, corridors between shelves, if you like. So right. it's like a huge rack of uh, shelving units. You just wind a thing and it comes out. Uh, it's a space saver. So that, that was from Colin. And my goodness, it's a lot of filing. An awful lot of filing. So shout out to I Colin. I can hear you scrolling through it. That yeah, was the scrolling, Colin. yeah. Um, mm, Colin, then I have thanks one so from, much for getting in touch, Colin. Yeah, cheers, Colin, mate. Um, yeah, interesting job, herbarium assistant. I guess it's like a bit of a weird... It's, I don't know oh. if I consider that filing. Lewis though. is jealous now. Do you know what I mean? He's jealous. No. He's obviously he's pressing plants, which is cool. Lewis hates right? this. And when somebody ro- writes in and they have like an <laughs> in- intellectual type job, does that count? As it triggers filing? Lewis big time. Like he doesn't want to hear from you. Okay, if you have like some science job or whatever, don't get in touch. Okay, <laughs> we're trying to keep. I guess what I'm saying is archiving is different. It's like putting away physical specimens of objects. Right. That's that's like. That's like keeping track, uh, keeping a record right. of the physical world. Yeah. By sort of it's filing not... them in, in... By filing them. Yeah. I mean, it All is right, essentially look, filing. If we're going to get into semantics here, sure. That's <laughs> you the type of filing, it. Right? 
But just saying, I don't consider that pure filing. Right? Mm. If I was a mathematician, okay, right, and someone had, and I was doing pure mathematics, yeah. and someone came along and said, "Oh, work, work me out this, um, you know, work, look at how tall this building is." And I'd be like, <laughs> "Classic job, get of a out of my shop, yeah, <laughs> get out of my shop. It's a mathematician's shop. Can I help yeah, you, sir? I'm, oh, I'm, I'm looking not... for a quadratic equation. Actually, <laughs> well, they're over here." On the shelf. Uh, yeah, this is the pure mathematics shop. Exactly. Thank you, Pyrian. All right. I'll get on with okay. it. What's the next bit? I got one from Neil. Uh, he's uh, he's a Canadian. Right. Sips. He's from from your end of things. Um, he's been. I mean, it's a big years. place. Like, is he it actually is. from my end, or is he just happen to live in the from, same? He says he's from your end. I don't know if. All oh, right. Okay. Are we calling Neil a liar just out of the gate? I don't know. I don't know, so, Neil. Are you a liar? <laughs> He's got a couple of questions. Are you a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a couple of questions. I had a terrible encounter with my quantum computing uh, professor. Oh, uh, here the we go. The gist of it was he walked into him mid poo in the public <laughs> toilet because he forgot to lock the door. Right. And as he went to block the door, he slipped inside the washroom and fell. And the Jeez. class is oh very small, gosh. and they now share this intimate secret, which makes things very awkward, which is that right. is unfortunate. Uh, and oh, he has dear. a one-to-one -one exam review with him next week, and he's really scared, and he's wondering whether he should bring it up, or to kill the tension, or just not mention it. What, I don't what, think I don't think you ever bring it up. I it's one of those things you 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 just Square store it away. in the knowledge bank, right? And every time this guy says you something th to you, think about it again and again. Yeah, that's right. Every time this For guy tries to life. get a one up on you or tell you what to do or whatever, you have a slight giggle to yourself and you say. You don't tell me what to do because you have this knowledge now, right? That this guy slipped in a bathroom after taking a dump and everybody knows about it or whatever, <laughs> you know? The worst possible thing a teacher could ever do, right? Like, uh, right. I think anybody who, who sees a teacher or a police officer or anybody that you're meant to hold in some high esteem um, fall from grace like that, you know? Like, show that they're just one of the, one of the little people deep down inside. Uh, I don't want to go all Sherlock Holmes on this. It gives right, you the, that power, right? Here we go. It, it, it gives you that power. He's, he's a man who doesn't lock the bathroom door. Right? Well, he might have just forgotten. No, but there's certain people who don't. If you have a family, <laughs> if you live with your parents, you don't forget to lock the bathroom door. I'm sure you don't, P Flax. I right? to, I, I, I'm going to just say if I'm taking a dump, I'm I'm 100% always locking the door. And if I can't lock the door, I'm not taking a dump. That's just uh, now. Can I can I if level you with you guys? On your own, and you got an you might even start taking a dump with the door open in that Stockholm apartment right, when you're in your bachelor. I did. I didn't you the door. you took an open door dump. Yeah, I, I live alone in that apartment for a week. Man. There's no one there. Come on. Exactly. I'm up to and my neck. I'll, I'll, I'll give you one better, here. Sips. I'll give you one better. I don't even have a lock on my bathroom door here at home. What the fuck? We don't have you a lock. You live with three women. Yeah. We don't are have they, a are lock. Are they just in perpetual fear of <laughs> seeing you on the toilet? No, the, the rule is if the door is closed, somebody's in there. So Otherwise, you're, the door but is you're in there birthing out an anaconda and somebody yeah. just walks in? I mean... Well, if they did that... How do they know it's, it's empty, though, if the door's closed? What do you mean? Well, what if it's... What Do you never close the door? But here, if I, it's... I'll show you. Listen. Right. Did you hear that? What's that? That's a knock. Right. That's a very simple, very ancient technique for your checking kids are, if someone you, is the other side of the door. Your kids must be really well trained because my kids just yeah. barge into any door they see. I, I like, can't they have think no of the last time going I knocked on a door. Places, and they're just like, well, a closed door, boom, it's open. Like, they're just, they're going so in if there. So you if you see a closed bathroom door, the first thing you do is try to open it. Not Look, me personally, okay. no. Let's do, let's let's do this situation. Okay, you have your you've been caught out. Okay, you were out walking around town, going to the math shop, whatever. You bought <laughs> some quadratic equations. Yes. Right. You got them in your bag. Yeah. You're taking them home. You need. You get an urge. You need to poo. He's just had okay? his new teeth and his new hair as well. <laughs> you need to poo. Right. You 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 bust into the house. You head to the bathroom. You're like, oh, I, I'm desperate now. Really desperate. Hang on a second. Is anyone in there? Just checking. Well, Is anyone but, in there? No? It, it, okay, I'd let me go in now. Bathroom. You've got no time for that. All right. You've got no time well, for that. I've managed to make it all it's the way coming. home. What about I this? I understand that seconds count, but I, I can't be literally 
that is the difference between me shitting myself and making it to the toilet. I There's doubt one, that very much. One small problem with the with relying on the knock. What if you knock and the person inside has fallen asleep and they miss the knock? But then you <laughs> open the door and wake them up, and there they are. Uh, just uh, waking up after they fell asleep while taking a crap, and you've startled them. You know. Here's the well, problem with you're the right, knock. That would be bad, but unusual. Here's the pro- here's the problem with the knock. Go on. What do you say when they knock? Uh, oh no, sorry. No, I'm oh, I'm in here doing a poo. Don't come in. Like, what do you do? Occupied. Like, you're occupied. <laughs> yeah, occupied. <laughs> like, what do you do? Like, there's no good outcome for the counter knock. You're say, just causing someone stress. I, I say no. That's what I say. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, just, just. Uh, I just feel like both the, both scenarios are not good. You know, the knocker might not wait long enough after knocking right. and still interrupt the person. That upsets the person. I just, I don't mind the rattle of the door. You know, right. I know I'm safe right in there. What about? Doing a poo. Okay, what about your mid conversation with somebody? Like, uh, probably your kids in this case, or my kids, I would say. Your mid conversation, you say, "Okay, I'll be back in a second. I just got to go to the bathroom." Right? right? You go in, you close the door. You might lock it if you if you are that way inclined, or if not. You're normal. But the door is closed. <laughs> you right. sit down. You start doing your business, and outside you can hear the conversation still going. The person's still talking to you when you're in the bathroom. Has that ever happened right. to you before? Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you sure. talk back, or do you are you just yeah, like, yeah. "Give me a minute. I just need to go to the. I, I got to concentrate." I'll normally when I'm say. In there. Can you please wait? And here's the thing that Mrs. F does. If she needs to talk to me and I'm in the bathroom, she will wait outside the door. And I'm like, can you just fuck off? She's like, I want to talk to you. She's like, I want to talk to you. I was like, can you wait until I finish shitting yeah. and then we'll talk? Now's like, I don't want to sit out there yeah. hearing the I poo not... splashing into the water. Me, yes. like that. <laughs> fuck off. But the yeah, door lock wouldn't I... help in this situation. Man, right, no, it's I like see. I, my my kids do this thing too, and I'm sure yours did as well, Flax, where like the other day the, the baby threw up everywhere. You know, yeah. like babies do, right? But she just she just barfed everywhere. She was plastered in it. Like her whole yeah, high chair. It's disgusting everything, it happens. Right? It's just it's part of it. Yeah. And you know, luckily we're both around when this happens. So um like my wife picked her out of the high chair quickly. I stripped all of the sort of like padding for the high chair and everything, put it in the washing machine straight away. And my, but my wife was still standing there holding the baby far away from her because she's just dripping in barf, right? right. Uh, it's in the kitchen, so it's going on the floor, whatever. But it's fine, like you know, we, we that's easy, easy clean. We, yeah, that's an we've easy done clean. this before. It's an easy clean or whatever. But when you got two other doing kids, it for ten years, like my my daughter comes in, she's like, "Can you cut the tag off of this teddy bear for me that that I just got?" And like. What timing is this? Like, can you not see what's happening here? No, I'm not cutting the tag like, off of anything right there's now. There's like a baby covered, I'm covered in, barf, in puke. Barf. Like, there's no fucking way. Like, it's just the the timing is crazy, right? Like, yeah. they have they no don't, concept. They, don't get, they yeah. don't get it. All right, so, so we're, okay, we're going back to the, Neil. Uh, first of all, okay. no, no. First of all, let me just finish. <laughs> okay. I don't talk to people when they're in the toilet. I don't. I'm not comfortable with it. Me neither. I don't like. I don't like people coming into the toilet, even like my partner. I'm like, I'm pooping or peeing in here. Like, that's my thing. Yeah. Right. I know. I, what about no, if you're in the shower? That. What about if like, you're in the shower? Some people don't mind, but I, I just don't like to keep a separation. Like, I like to keep something mysterious in our relationship. <laughs> Honestly, if, I, if one I, of those. If, if, <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say about showers, though, Flax, but for me, shower, I don't give a fuck. If somebody comes in while I'm right, taking right, a exactly. shower, whatever. Exactly. But like, if I'm I mean, if, if the, the peeping kids, or pooping. The kids are obviously not allowed in while I'm showering, but Mrs. F sometimes needs to get something. Not having sure. the bathroom door locked Showering. in that instance is quite useful. Yeah. Fine. But but pooping or peeping, it's, it's, your, it's, your, it's your own time. Pooping or oh, peeping. Can I, also add, private, can I yeah. also add one specific detail which might help to understand the situation better? The toilet is behind the door in such a way that when the door opens, it'll like hit you in the face if you're on the toilet. Oh, so right, right. you've got that extra barrier and a chance to no and put your hand on the door man that doesn't sound like optimal bathroom layout though it's not but it's a small it's a small bath it's a small house it's an old house there's not much to do about it yeah it is i will i will say we have a more like i think i've always had a more like marco polo style like hello if and you know and then (laughs) if you hear a little hello from the bathroom you know that it's like well, there you uh, go. Occupied. I answered your question you know I mean? earlier of, of that way, what would That you way say? I don't even have to knock, you know, and cause that drama. Because right, trying know, the door like... is kind of aggressive. It feels like someone's trying it to break in. It is kind of aggressive. Because you're very vulnerable yeah. when you're pooping. You're like, like even when my dog poops, 
she's like all eyes and ears. She's like, if someone's trying to sneak up on me while I'm pooping, you know, she's like worried. Yeah. Because it's a vulnerable, like a... you're in a vulnerable position. Hell anyway, yeah. So I guess well, what with I'm a saying dog, is, with... especially, eh? you're squatting, it's coming out. Like, Oof. man, that's the prime time for that's like the a other jaguar to just ambush. rip your throat out or something. Like. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's, na- that's natural selection, baby. Uh, waiting for them to poop and then jumping on their throat. Holy Listen, fuck. with Neil and his his teacher, I feel like there's there's two dangerous scenarios we need to be aware of. The first is obviously that the um that that man is sad, lonely, lives alone, unlike you, P. Flex, with your family and dog, and he is he's on the edge. Mm. He's leaving the toilet open. But the second thing is that he could be doing it on purpose to hoping someone will bust him and that's his thing. <laughs> right. If it was his these, thing, he wouldn't I think throw these two, on the floor. I think this analysis is, uh, is, is not great because we don't know okay. his personal situation and yeah. it's very unlikely that he is waiting for people to burst in on him. It's a very right. bad... I mean, for a start, if you're actually pooping, like, that's not good. But uh, the, the other thing is, is why would you then panic and try to co- close the door, slip and fall? Like, that would, you'd just give a sort of wink. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, finally, I you know. S- I oh, see. That is so fucking you funny. It's like the spider caught another fly. Ooh, you know. You, like, squirreled that one away for yeah. the bank, I see. Right. So, anyway. Okay. Oops, no, so I've no, you're slipped. right. Oops, you're my right. cock is out. <laughs> oh, Stop oh, my bottom, my bottom is showing. <laughs> um, so, we're, we're all saying, don't mention it. That's, the, that's it, Neil. Number yeah, two. the best thing to do is just to never mention Lord that Lord over him and, and never hope. mention it, yeah. So his second thing, and this is this is crazy, makes me ask a lot of questions about Neil. Completely off topic, there is a conspiracy that Starbucks purposefully misspells the customers' names on the cups when you order. They do it so that people get angry and talk or post about them on social media. Thoughts on this? That's, what, that's the conspiracy theory, that Starbucks does it on purpose because they know people are going to tweet it or Instagram it or whatever, yeah. a picture of their misspelled name, and it's the Starbucks fucking logo is right there in the tweet. It's like a subtle kind of marketing. What do we think? Do we think that's an actual thing? It, it, is, it is hilarious how the baristas do seem to have never heard of normal names before. Because <laughs> yeah. you'll say, they'll say, what's your name? And you'll be like, Mark. And they'll be like, okay, and now they'll write Merck on it or something. And you'll be like, <laughs> right. Merck isn't even a fucking name. Like, how did you not know that? Like, where do you come from? Are you an alien? My like, son's I, name I... is also Bort, is what, is what you're <laughs> yes. saying. Yeah. Uh, what are you talking about? My, B- Merck is a perfectly cromulent name. <laughs> right. no, it's, I feel like you're damned if you do um... and you're damned if you don't. Like, if you give your real name, they're going to misspell it. If you give a joke name, they're just going to put it on there and then somebody's going to take a picture, you know? Like, if I go right. into Starbucks and I say, they say, oh, can I take your name? And say, yeah, Mike Tyson. Uh, you know, everybody's just going to be like, oh, fuck this guy. I'm going to take a picture of his coffee. It says Mike Tyson on it i'm gonna get a million views or whatever you know what i mean like it's thing is they'd spell your name m-i-t-i-s-o-n do you know i mean they'd spell it like the the way you sort of just casually phrased it because they probably have never heard of mike tyson yeah no it'd be like like, 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 who's the who's mike tyson it'd be like the like like the the scottish spelling right so it'd be like mc uh t-y-s-o-n mctyson mctyson yeah yeah i want to know when did we start calling people that work in coffee shops baristas they work in a fucking right. coffee shop. I'm well, what sorry, do you, what but would calling you call them, them all baristas. If I work in a in a grocery store, right, yeah. like a supermarket, I don't have a fancy title. I'm a checkout. I work at a checkout. I work at a till. I work in a shop. But so what would you call that? that? A push cashier? A button, yeah. No, people you're that, you're like a sales assistant. Right, but or people that go now, beep you, and a coffee comes out, now they're a fucking barista. No, Is that a not. cashier as well? I'm saying. It they needs a title the that doesn't sound though, right? so fancy. Yeah, but Starbucks coffee tastes like shit. There's no artifice to it. And quite often, the person working the till isn't the one making the coffee. They're the one working the till. And some other poor chump has to go... All their coffee I, comes I know, from like, like, a, a, like a gloop from a bag. Have you ever noticed that? There's always like right. bags no, no, full no. of gloop back there. I don't I'm know what's in I'm talking Starbucks. It. If you work in a coffee proper Coffee comes high-end from coffee deep shop. inside, guys. Right. And it's made with love yeah. and care. And they're co- the corporate overlords uh, love you and want you to have a good time. They don't care yeah. about you know anything else. They just I actually, I, I personally don't really cases, mind a, a Starbucks that much. They're overstating their job. They're overstating their I kind of like the taste of their coffee. Like burnt shit. Yeah, no, but it's true. It's like, like I think the checkout person doesn't is a sales assistant. They work in sales. Do you know what I mean? You go to get a, you put that on your CV, and it's it's it doesn't say I worked in McDonald's right for four years. You say I worked in a high end eatery <laughs> as a sales assistant. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, executive That's what you'd sales say. fucking assistant. In other words, he knew yeah, how to do refunds it, on the till. 
Man, I like yeah, when people ask me you know, what I do now. It's the only way now. they can convince people into these jobs. What do you well. say your job is? Oh, I, I come up with everything. I just say right. like what, like it changes all the time. It depends who I'm talking. Like if an old person asks me what I what what, what my job title is, I'm like oh, I'm a wizard or like uh, f- I'm a scientist <laughs> or whatever. Like I don't give a shit, man. And they, if they ask me specifically what I do, I just make that up too. I just come right. up with all sorts of crap. Like, oh, yeah, so I press it, wild flowers and uh, strangle birds. Uh, like, whatever. Like, I don't care. Like, You could say your job is professional liar then. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm like a, like I'm a, a Saul Goodman, um, like, in real life. Like, just... just no, but that's the catch-22, isn't it? It's like, if you, say, if you say you're a liar, but it, do you... Were you lying about that? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Or you, oh, I see. Yeah. That's the whole... Indeed. Um, yeah. I, I just say I work in, with computers. Yeah. I just yeah, say I, I work in, with computers. And yeah. people go, okay. I work with computers. Yeah. They that don't, is such an they easy... Don't, I work on a computer. For, for idiots. I work with yeah. computers. Because I, I, I don't, I don't want to have to explain it. And it, also, it kind of sounds like... Like, once you have to go into it, they have so many questions, and you've just kind of answered them a million times. If it's someone that I... I'm potentially going to be friends with or whatever, then of course I'll take the time. But if it's someone I'm going to meet once and never see again, and it's just going to be a boring conversation for them and for me, I just say, I work in IT. And then we could talk about something well, else. Well, it's exactly the same with me. And and honestly, like, I meet these people sometimes who obviously, who who, who just, uh, not at the pub, but randomly, you know, you meet people because you've got friends and they have friends and blah, blah, blah. Um, and they're like, oh, what do you do? I'm always like, oh, I... I um I just I like sips. I just make something up yeah. on the spot. Usually, I'm like, oh, I'm a. I'm video an old editor, style cat just... burglar uh, with, the... <laughs> <laughs> with the masquerade mask and In everything. In classical style, I'm a cat burglar. <laughs> it's a dying art, but uh, I like to keep it alive. Well, I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter I'm though. Training right? up a young like, apprentice. Fucking, most of the people three. you meet, you're just like never going to talk to them again anyway. You might as well just make them laugh. You know, like right. what's quite funny though is when you fight. We meet. I met this this girl who was like, "Oh, I'm an Instagram model." I was like, "Oh my god, oh yeah!" And she sort of showed me her Instagram profile, and it had like is she a hundred followers. It had a hundred followers or something like that. Right. And I was well, like, "That's still this a, is your, this you is put your all job." Those people in one room. That's a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, like, you try to fuck not, all like, those people. Holy crap, that would be time. hard, man. Like, what I'm saying is if that all people. If one of those I, people fucked a flamingo, geez, that would be but no, but the greatest I think it's the of... other way round. I think she works in a fucking Starbucks, but she wants, she tells people she's an Instagram model, whereas. We're we're fucking doing this, and we tell people we're just having to work with computers. Yeah, well, it's always the way. A billionaire doesn't introduce themselves as a bill. I'm not saying I'm one, but like, you know what I mean. You don't just no, say I'm a billionaire. It's not like you, that. you, you do like that. Uh, you 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 pretend that you're insane, and you walk around your bathroom in your slippers like that uh, head of a mafia family used to do in New York. Remember, everybody thought he was crazy, but then crazy Joe. But then behind crazy the Joe scenes, Devola? he was uh, he was pulling all the strings big time. Right, and they never, all the strings. they never, they Big never time. picked them up. I don't want to say it's like modesty or anything like that. It's literally just entirely selfish reasons. It's like I don't want to, I don't want to get into a conversation. I don't want them to look at, look me up. I don't want any of that. No. Do you know what I mean? I just want to yeah. be, I just want to be left alone and talk I'm about whatever. I'm ashamed of all those cum jokes that I make shit. on a daily basis. <laughs> I don't want anyone to watch my my videos. That's, that's the worst when someone I don't that want I know. Them to know too much it, yeah. about me though as well especially when i'm out like with my partner or something and we're meeting some of her friends and and you know i don't want them to go home and like fucking look me up and listen to me talk about them on the podcast or whatever yeah. do you know what I mean because they're nice enough people right they just don't need to know i, I, I just hate don't it. need this uh, other grown-ups that i meet ask me what i do and i sometimes someone will tell them before i can say and they're like, oh, he's famous on the internet. And I'm like, please don't say that. Like, that's really. And they're like, I'm going to look you up. I heard you got a podcast. I'm like, please don't listen to that. Please don't have anything to do with any of the internet stuff that I do. Just stay away. I please, please. I, it, it's not for you. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. I know you, and it's not for you. Please. They're gonna they fucking eat anyway. you alive out there. <laughs> <laughs> You're not ready for it. Trust me. It's it's, it's degenerate. It's weird, but yeah, I feel like um, it's not that I'm necessarily embarrassed, but it's more that um, I I don't know necessarily know that they'll listen to a good bit because usually what will happen is they'll listen to like a little bit. They're like, that was a very funny, yeah. and right. then they'll be like, oh yeah. <laughs> I thought he was shit. They'll listen I listened to one of the bad thing. episodes. Like, oh, yeah. Episode one eight seven. Oh, you know, crap. they just they just tuned in for five fucking seconds and they just man. Got a bad for me, it's always whatever. like, and I only played. It's not all gold. I only played saying. Happy Wheels like two times, 
And uh, but still, it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, I saw you play Happy Wheels. Like, oh, come on, I played it two times. Like how how like eleven how years ago? How did you sift yeah. through the the swamp of you get fucking that? garbage content I've created over ten years and find it's, that it's one? It's the same with my brother. Like my brother will email or like send me a WhatsApp message saying, oh, I just watched that video of you sh- shooting those boxes, and I'm like, where the fucking the fuck was that? That was like seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, it's like, it's like right. I don't even remember that at all. Got another email here this is from aiden these have been great for sparking conversation holy crap way, let yeah me just say he's a university student in liverpool and he wants to interject on the topic of the liverpool hooters oh uh, which we spoke about uh-huh. and by extension the liverpool strip clubs discussed on the podcast and how you mentioned that they are looked down on in liverpool i don't know if we said they were or we suspected they were i can't remember. yeah i don't know if we have I, I, any uh... i suspect that strip clubs in general are probably looked upon down downwards by a lot of woke modern people right who don't think that they are up to date with the times. so yes i don't think that's an unreasonable take right. to is have. that, is that, so is says, that the consensus nowadays though is that what how people really feel about i don't know if we i mean i know that there's a lot of there's the a lot of, of my body, my choice, and stuff too, right? But there's and also stuff like sex work is real work, and yeah, sex yes, and the strip club like there provides a valuable people, service in the community. Lots of people yes. have <laughs> discovered that the uh, health and fitness benefits of stripper poles as well, which <laughs> they install in is there. very good for you. Yeah, apparently. exactly. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. Maybe it's still not quite frowned upon. So well, is yoga and running. And other things that aren't involving exploitation of vulnerable women, probably. I don't think that, by its nature, the pole is exploitative. If you're doing it for cash on a in a seedy bar or on a near a fucking cheap motel in the middle of fucking nowhere in the U.S. for a buck a dance, then sure, that's probably pretty exploitative. But what if you couldn't get a job doing something else and you enjoyed your work? I mean, you know, I know. It's, I it's just hard throw it out. The, it's a, I always it's a feel like I have to list. throw out the alternate um, yeah, of course. You, you viewpoint here. No, anyway, that's, yeah, fine. That's, that's, that's fine. Aiden Pardon. does not believe this is the case, as whenever he goes anywhere in Liverpool Town Centre after dark, there are people with strip club camp pamphlets and two for one deals for drinking, advertising a local strip club, even going as far as seeing them with big signs that say "Hot Girls This Way" written on them. Uh, I've See, never, I love that I, two. I, I love the two for one deal at a strip club. Like uh, you yeah. got, like what's the two for one? All our all our girls got two titties. <laughs> Every single one guaranteed. We don't. We don't. Yeah, we we don't settle for walking around. We got no mono titties over here. No omni tits. Well, we got we got one broad who's got an eye patch on one yeah. of her tits. But she only uses it when she goes in from dancing because the lights get in her eye and she can see backstage. So she swaps the patch around. And she's missing anyway. a leg. Uh, but she got two titties, so no problem. We got no Cyclops titties in here, all right? They all got Cyclops two titties. Cyclops titties. And if you want to fuck something, we got flamingos backstage. <laughs> we got the flamingos. You got to break their neck. Oh, I've never fuck. been in one of these. I've never been in one of these establishments, continues Aiden. But I would guess they are rife with old scouse men who've had arguments with their wives and who need a quick high. In conclusion, these places are a hit and misogyny is the last thing on their minds. So his right. conclusion. I don't, well, I, don't I mean, know, but... I guess it's, I think it's probably easy to make assumptions about the caliber of the clientele and stuff. But realistically, there's going to be all walks of life going in there. I mean, the, the kind of average person I think is in there is Gaza. Well, right? what about what about tour buses filled with Japanese families? Nice. They seem to like this sort of stuff. Because when I was in Amsterdam, <laughs> right. man, they were piling into like sex shows and stuff with their. They had their cameras and everything. They were ready. Like this was a novelty for them. Uh, for whatever right. reason, and you know, maybe you don't see that so much at strip clubs, but. There is kind of like an element of like, um, I want to say fun, but like maybe, you know, people trying to experience something a little bit out of the ordinary for them. You know what I mean? Like um, the first time you ever go to, I know we've talked about this like a billion times, but like um, it's kind of like a coming of age thing in some ways too, right? Like like we went to one. Well said. Good pun. When we when we turned eighteen, and it was like, let's go and see what it's all about, sort of thing, and it was, it was kind of weird and creepy and stuff, but like we had fun too. Like it was just, you know, it was just one of those things. And I think that you're right. It is it is a touristy thing and a jokey yeah, thing be. and a cultural thing and a stag dewy thing and a laddie thing. Oi oi. Yeah, I I I think it's I think it's becoming more 
of a, less of a desperate thing and more of a joke thing. Um, and I think people are aware that it is like kind of. I feel like there's yeah, there's better cool. places to be desperate nowadays, right? Like you've got right. you've got the internet now; it's in full <laughs> swing. You, why you don't need to leave your house to be that desperate anymore? You know, like well, I feel I like an, I got another strip club related email that might solidify your point yet further. Do we have any strip club workers? Shipping in, or is this just no? This is a this is a uh, teenagers this who've is never a, been an email to a strip from Colin. This is, that is who's that is exactly works at a strip club. right, Lewis. This is going to be more Parker. To typical this listener. Is, this is a very long email, but I'm going to sum up the best part of it. Okay, okay. They, in, in essence, him and his mates they're 18, and they decide to go to a strip club. They find one that they can get into, and uh, there's a whole bunch of other blah 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 blah. One of his friends goes for a backstage dance and comes back and says that he had a great time and he got to give the stripper a massage with cocoa butter uh, and he said it was really hot and they t his friend talks him into getting a dance backstage one-on-one -on -one. so he's like fine so this is where the story picks up so she takes me I'm, back and this I'm, was the this most sounds, awkward moment of my life first thing she didn't get redressed and was still covered in john's cocoa butter <laughs> oh nice <laughs> okay john. nice i'm counting the seconds trying not to think about john and it is dead silent the dancer begins to make the most awkward small talk ever. Where are you guys from and how long are you guys down here for? I'm nice, so I give her a little run through of our plan. And eventually she starts giving me travel tips. Have you been to Johnson oh. Beach's Papa Gio's Greek restaurant? It's so good. <laughs> it has a great drink menu. And she went on for what seemed like a decade. And when she said, you know, you can touch me, right? So he says, great. And he says, <laughs> this is in words, proceeded to pull the most half assed hip holding like in GTA 5. <laughs> so his only experience with strippers to this point is Grand Theft Auto. When you go to the strip club, he gives her the money and leaves and he's still covered in cocoa butter uh, and stinks of it till he gets home. That is super awkward. Funny when you'll talk about it later, but I feel bad for that lad. Uh, that, but that, that, was is my, That's I mean, that is my, that is what I think my oh like like every Lewis's top five strip know. club moments <laughs> number one yeah, the, the cocoa butter <laughs> incident <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah. well I think that would be like every every moment in the strip club for me um I don't know it's, it's, I don't it's know. awkward it can be very very awkward it can be. and I think yeah. the only people it wouldn't be awkward for would be people who went there all the time um and yeah i i get it i i think they are very awkward uh and i i'm sure that aiden will will think of this uh in years to come and think nope that's why i don't go to strip clubs yeah i think i i don't know is it something to do with kind of uh, i don't know it's so complicated i don't know is it, what are you what are you doing what do you what do you want i mean if you go into the math shop and buy the quadratic equation yeah. that you know what you're getting right but like in the strip club what are you what was he? What was he thinking was going to happen? Man, he just he's, he's going to rub cocoa butter on a strip of tits. He's they're just going with the lads. That's they're fine. Doing some Jaeger That's bombs. fine. They're in the club. Like they're having a nice time, man. Like just. Why didn't he just come out with cocoa butter all over his face and be like, "Whoa, <laughs> <"Oi, oi>, lads!" <laughs> That's like, and I would have gone backstage. I would have been like, "Listen, darling." Uh, I'm just going to rub some cocoa butter on my face um, and you can just stand there. Me, darling, um, I'm actually allergic to cocoa butter. Um, can you have something else uh, that is not going you to have flare vegan up my vegan cocoa allergies? butter? Yeah. I can't have ones with hazelnuts in. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. And that would that would be exactly what happened to me. Um Holy crap! Well, there you go. That was a, that was a fucking podcast. Man, that was well a good done. podcast. And uh, man, the mailbag really delivered this week. Holy crap! It was great. Because I was tell me about it. I was it. just going to talk about how I finished watching Severance, which was really good. I highly recommend. Oh, what it. a show! And uh, I was, was also good. just going to like uh, end up talking about how I started watching season six of Better Call Saul. I'm two episodes deep, and uh, it's it's pretty mm. good so far. I like the show a lot, so uh, it's good to, good to have it back. I didn't. I was going to mention. Right. Well, thanks, everyone. Uh, I was, sorry, just very quickly. I was going to mention See on ya. Netflix the TV show "Old Enough," which is a Japanese, very old Japanese show. It's been running for thirty years, and they get little kids to perform everyday errands and tasks. And they're very young. Sometimes they're like as young as two years old. Wow! And they turf them out into the street to go and like go and take this fish to the fishmonger and get it sashimi. Then pick up three oranges and two cans of milk and come back. They send a two-year-old to do that. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Now, 
it, they're very, we should talk about this. We should talk about it next week. Go ahead. You guys next go week. ahead and watch a couple What's of episodes called? and come back. Old enough. Old enough. Old enough. I, watched, right. I watched a couple. Yeah. It's great. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk about it next we'll, time. Right. We'll talk Here, about how about this time. for an outro? Okay, well, that's enough of that then. See ya. Bye. Bye.